you know, a lot, you're not looking at a lot of dollars that we're missing, but still. If you're not watching the dollars, you know, it's... I'm going by memory, but we did approve another person for Saturdays, right? It's in the budget. It's in the, it's in the budget, yeah. 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 And I think in my budget that I presented last year was a... Uh, um, is, is for three people, three days. But we just never filled that third position. So that's the other thing I'd like to talk about tonight. You want to talk about that now or mm -hmm. still talk about well, the position? One more question about the position. Sure. So you're saying that this person would be a transfer station manager and a handy man. So when would they have time to be assistant board agent? Well, that's the thing. You're going to have to decide where you want to split this. Oh, so we have to split that. You'd, you'd almost have to have, that would almost mean you need another person. that could be strictly, um, you know, strictly highway. Yeah. Okay. So. So that, Which they definitely need two full time people over there, if not another part time. How many full time highway people are there? Two. And uh, just, just us two. And everybody else is part time. Yep. How many hours of part time work over there? Well, we, depending on what we have going with projects. So we, you know, 24 to 30 maybe a week sometimes. Very rarely that him and I are there by ourselves. There's usually a third person. Not every day, but at some point during the week. Sometimes they come in for half a day or something like that. And, uh, so somewhere between 24 and 30 hours of part-time work on average a week. Yeah, close. Okay. Yep. So that's just another perspective, something to think about. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the meantime, we do have uh, people in place to take care of the day-to-day Short term, kind of like, well, like my kids. Okay. Taking care of the day to day on a limited basis. Okay. You know, every week we got to call Triano Waste to have them come and pick up our dumpsters, our cans. It depends on what, when they're full. So it's not on a set schedule. So um, is George, who manages that? I know I you, do. you do, but in the short term, is that George? I think or? it's, well, we're going to, Paul Martell is often to do the calling. Paul's the one who keeps us abreast what, what dumpsters need to be what done. What needs to be done. And he says he'd make the phone calls for, for that. Okay. Yeah. So, and I just want to make sure that we're covering the bases. Oh, we're, oh yeah. And, and, no, I'm, sure. I'm working really close and really hard right now to make sure everything that I do is covered by somebody. Uh, we also, they're all could I see that master plan. Could I see that plan when you do that? Yep. Yep. Well, there actually is a master plan that I did up some point last year. Uh, I never did send it to the state for final approval because we already have one in there. But I've got a new one that I did. Total update to what we had. And that needs to go to the state, which I was going to probably put that in paper form. They need it electronic, they need it paper, and they need, of course, a check. So it's 100 bucks to get that updated. It's, it's just the regulation the state has. But I will get that over to you folks. And that's designed... The state says you have to have that. So if a catastrophe happened and I was to drop dead, nobody, you know, someone could come in, open that book. Okay, batteries is where they go. Uh, that, that's a uh, municipal solid waste is where that goes with all the contact information, and that is all in paper form. So I just, gotta, I just went down through it the other day. I took the town administrator's name out of it. I don't have. I name the plug into it right now, unless I put Mike's name in. Uh, I might just put in town administrator with a phone number, the office phone number. That might be the way to do it. Yeah. Leaves it kind of open-ended that way. It can be updated at any time with the state without paying or anything. You just send a red line to copy. That's it. So that is in place. Okay. That's something that I never could put my hands on before. That's why I totally redid it. So. Um, so I had a couple comments um, about the job description. Um, or one's a question. Um, so one of the um, things I'm trying to understand is um, the liaison for hiring department and stormwater community. What makes the transfer station manager um, a, a qualified person to handle stormwater? It doesn't, but it would be the road agent, the assistant road agent side. And that's something George wanted to know. Okay. Um, so that's why I plugged it in. I mean, we both basically wrote this. I did the final. Okay. So you on it. know, 
Because I feel like you know the person high... out on the roads I... should be the person doing the stormwater management. Well, she, yeah. you know, we, we're both out on the road. Okay. And we're, you know, being my assistant, we've always worked close together. Okay. And if we're going to put a position in there for that, I don't know how many more years I'm going to work. So I'm thinking a newer person coming in and being into that position, getting involved with the stormwater situation and everything that's going on with stormwater right now would be a smart thing to do. You know? Or you'd be doing this again. What do you spend on the road, though, versus George? I felt, well, the best way to do it is how much time do I spend at the transfer station. Okay. And that's probably two or three hours a week, maybe. So mm -hmm. I don't spend a lot of time over there. It's mostly, and most of that's paperwork, you know, mm -hmm. that I do. Yeah. So Phone calls, paperwork, <coughs> making sure things are done. Okay. The guys themselves do the bulk of it. So the rest of the time you spend? I'm on highway. Okay. Highway time. Okay. Um, and then my other question was um, ability to obtain a New Hampshire Solid Waste Operators Level 1 license within one year of hire. Um, is that really a Required requirement? by the to work at a transfer station, you have to have that. So what if, shouldn't that be a requirement for the job and an expectation? I think I had that in there as a requirement. Um, but it says within Oh, the ability maybe they'll get it? Yeah. Because yeah. my you concern is what if they don't get it? You, then, you have to get it. They have to have it. The state requires that. Yeah. To have anybody, anybody that works, it has to have yeah. it. And they, you go to a class for one day, they pretty much give you the answers. You know, you sit through the class, they work right with you to get the test. By the end of the day, you have your license. So it's not a long So there's term. no likelihood they'll fail? No. Oh, not likely. Okay. No, no. Every guy that we have over there has that license. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. It's renewed on a yearly basis. You need two and a half hours of continuing education to keep the license. Um, the NRRA that we deal with, the Northeast Resource mm -hmm. Company, they offer, um, it's called a mom meeting, member operators meeting. It's held once a month, usually. November, December, they're not having it, and sometimes in the summertime they skip a couple of months. You go to one of those meetings, that's good for an hour, hour and a half. So you go to two of those, two of those meetings a year, they're held in Epsom, or this past year they were held online, and you got your credits. Do you people go to that or just you? No, people. Yeah, anybody that holds that license has to go, and uh, has to come up with two and a half hours. Uh, this past year, there was a lot of those meetings that weren't held, or they were held uh, virtually. They were always held, the problem is, they're always held on a Wednesday morning. We're open. I typically have tried to take a guy with me when I went past years and put a, have one of the other guys step in to watch the place when I took him. Uh, this last year, everybody did it online. Uh, George, I think yours was the last, no, Paul Mattel was the last one that just finished up. Um, and online, and some of those. Things online are through uh, uh, Primex, some of them are through NRA, or some are through also the uh, state, um, DHHS, I think it is. Who's Tara work for? Tara Albright, and anyway, she's the one that's kind of in charge of yeah, the environmental side of the state. And she has a whole list of classes that they've done that qualify. You see the computer, you watch it for an hour and a half, two, two hours. You get a certificate at the end. Yeah. So it's it's not difficult to maintain the license. Okay. Great. Thank you. So is there a computer at the transfer station that they can do it or they do it? Not at the transfer station. They've actually used their own at their houses. Yeah. Yeah. I do have a laptop, a town laptop that's over there. So that could be utilized if they need to. And like I say, they have to print out a certificate and won't print the certificate out until they finish the class. There's a little end thing that you do. And yeah, I've done that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're good classes. They're informational for the most part. You know, there's not a lot of testing involved with them, but it's all good information. If you're one of those. That's ones. basically what they want you to have. Yeah. All the work coming in and the yeah. stuff that's coming in off the market that they yeah. see for batteries and stuff like that. You want to, you know, you don't want to be throwing it in the, the trash. And, yeah. You want to do recycling that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that is something they have to have. Okay. Thank you. Sure. sure. Um, did you guys have any other questions for him before he... Um... No. I, um, I'll throw something out, though. I would like to suggest that uh, I be the liaison 
the highway for like the transition. I don't know how you feel about that because I have a lot more free time than you do. So I'm okay with it. You really get with you guys to see if we can figure this out. Mm -hmm. Just through just through the transition. And then you, you won't have it. From there, well, from there too, we don't if you yeah. don't you know. I'll just I mean maybe I should look at some of those things and give you another set of eyes, I guess is what I'm saying. My last day is a week from Thursday. Good. But I'm also available by phone afterwards. I know I've, I've said yes. There you go. <laughs> I've said I've said to George, because I've known George for forty plus years, but just a phone call away. Now it's it's not like okay, well, I'm gone. You know, no, feel free. Thank you. We're well, not off the hook on the selectman PC. <laughs> okay, that is actually something I had to give up up there. I heard that. I did so um, for the time being. They did not want to sitting selectman. That's the key word. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. June, I can put back in for. I may. I might end up, I might enjoy just sitting back. Right. <laughs> we'll right. see. Yeah. How many years do you have this is like? Ten. Ten. Yeah. You might enjoy uh, yeah. I don't know. It's, no, you won't. I'm a button for punishment. <laughs> I do enjoy it. I can it. tell. I look at who you're with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. No, I do enjoy it, so. No, I don't have any objections to that either. I mean, you probably have more time than the rest of us. Like, we're into winter. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I don't think you have to vote on that necessarily. No. Just a temporary thing. Okay, yeah. sure, great, thank you. I just don't want to step on people's toes. No, I don't think that. Thank you. Um, it would be good if you want to stop in and we'll go down, we can get down through a lot of the I'd like things to do that. that happen over there. So, okay. see the inside, you'll see it from the, behind the curtain, if you will. You might be able to allocate some of your responsibilities from this one. You never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> good thing you were looking this way. <laughs> you would have. Um, the other thing I'd like to talk about, if we could. So the plan is not to fill a position at this time, is that? Uh, I think we're evaluating um, what the options are. Is that yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think both of those options are reasonable. We're just going to look at which one's better for us. Okay, guys, I don't know what you're going to say, but. <laughs> the next thing I'd like to talk about is pay. Hey, and that's for the guys over there. We all know how the economy is and what's going on. I get a, a report from Chuck uh, where I am budget wise. Uh, I've got about 10 grand right now in my attendance line, which I'm not going to come anywhere near close to using that between now and the end of the year. I did a, a quick and dirty analysis. If we were to implement the raises, for the guys over there that I proposed for next year, could be done now, to the end of the year, with about, not quite, about $4,000 left over. Um, okay. Um, so the, the only thing I have to comment about that is, um, I don't know if you've seen where we are with the budget. No. Um, I, I can make that number available to you. Um, we are kind of leaning towards a 5%, um, I'll call it market adjustment. Um, however, there was some adjustment, additional adjustments in the budget that I made for your line item because mm -hmm. it looks like they took money away in 2020. Um, Could be, I don't remember. Yes. Yeah, they did, they took one. They took one. So you were okay. at 33, yeah, you were at 33,000. Um, and so it looks like they took money away from that uh, position. Um, I added that back in as part of the proposed budget for um, 2022. Um, we also funded for the fourth person, plus we did 5% on top of that. And so that ends up being. I can see what that looks like. Um, yep, I can tell you what that is. And so we are we are a hundred percent in agreement on this yet, but it's mm -hmm. kind of where we're leaning. Um, let me give you that. So, so that is um, so you might have to do some uh, sharpen your pencil a little bit. Okay. Um, to see how you can make this. Oh, work. that's right. Um, it ends up being an additional $1,264. Yeah. 
Two sixty-four. Okay. So that brings the proposed. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's definitely off from where you had asked, but that brings the proposed appropriation for twenty twenty-two to thirty-nine thousand ninety-three dollars. Um, we're not final on it, mm -hmm. you know, we're, and actually we're going to be discussing it again in this meeting. Um, so you, so you might. Consider that. Can, uh, can I ask a question on? Go. It's on the part of the page, but it's the holiday part of the page. We, I think we brought this up before. These guys get a holiday. They get docked in hour and uh, half. That's Our another holiday. problem because they that's, should be. That's something. They should be a day's pay. I thought we saw that last year. No, no, we only went up. Fraction of an hour. Mm -hmm. They get paid for I think it's three point two hours out of five if they if there's a holiday. So they don't collect PTO though. They get nothing. And this is I don't this think is they see in our policy. Yeah. Is um, some of our part time people actually get PTO, others don't. So that's on the strategic plan list. So for example, Andrea gets PTO for a certain number of hours. These guys work those hours, but they don't get PTO. Um, so I think we need to have a deep discussion about that. That's fine. I mean, it, it's not like they're losing pay because they get paid. You know, I mean, well, they are, they're losing pay, mm -hmm. but I mean, it, it's based on a regular schedule on as far as the salary, the salary base is there. So, yeah. I mean, taking money away from them because they're taking the day off is not the right thing to do. Right? No, I agree that. That should be, that we should. I could have sworn that should be adjusted if it's, you know, no. if it's a Saturday, you get paid for Saturday. Yeah, or if it's a Monday holiday, they should get paid the five hours that they normally would be open. So, Mike, mm. can, can you, I need to add that, probably bring that forward to this list that we need to resolve, because it might be, I don't even know that it's in the personnel policy, because I went back and forth with Caroline on this, uh -huh. um, and I don't think it's noted that, but it just was a, like a verbal thing that they wouldn't get PTO, um, even though they're working as um, non-exempt non -exempt employees mm -hmm. in the same way other people are. Um, so definitely a discrepancy there. Mm. Um, so that might be so something we want to bring to the top to help with um, retention, I'll say, um, especially if we're asking them to give back a little bit in terms of salary increases. Yeah. So how close are we from the numbers that we have in my head is looking at pretty close, right? Um, I'd have to go, well, I'd have to go back. Yeah, I'd have to go look at them, sit down with them. Yeah. I have, I do so. have the original one. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, that would definitely yeah. add some value, um, you know, to yeah. the deal. The so guy, the lowest paid guy over there right now gets, I think it's $13 an hour. And that person would go to fifteen fifty. the way I have a ticket. And then the highest paid guy would be sixteen twenty-five. There's only one of those. So there's two of the others. So we have. Um, oh, it's actually, it's pretty significant. Oh, that's for each. That's for each one. Um, sanitation. So they had proposed at forty. So originally, when we had this first, when we first got this budget. Um, with the $211,000 increase in 9%. Um, that line was proposed at 49400 Yeah, we went down. Uh, yeah, and so um, with the 5%, um, even with, um, you know, giving back the money that they took last year, um, funding the fourth position and also doing the 5%, um, it the My salary or my pay comes out of the highway department. So if you no part of it comes out of this budget. So if you decide to do something with a 
to, with the the manager of the transfer mm -hmm. and facilities director, for instance, you'll have to plug a number in somewhere for that into this. this mm -hmm. right. That could possibly be <coughs> one person, or maybe so he just works. Now he'd have to work more than just Saturday. So he'd work Saturday and one day. So it was a proposed difference about ten thousand. $10,000 more. Okay. So let me ask this, Ed. Um, if you were to go back and look at increases um, with your remaining budget, um, kind of knowing what um, the rate might be based on what we're proposing going forward, um, and you only have three people right now, um, how could you split that to make it work? I'd have to keep it to three people rather than having the fourth on a Saturday. But you wouldn't do that until next year anyway. Right. Yeah. Right. And I'd have to just go back and look at my budget and see if there's some other places that I could attempt to shape it in the sea. There's, you know, the, the, there's two big unknowns in this budget. Uh, one is you don't know how much you're going to throw away. So that's, you know, right. yeah. So how many tons are you going to have to pay to get rid of? And the same with the demo. And looking at, looking at my numbers right now, uh, I've got about 4,900 left in, so I've got 9,000 left in the MSW side of it. Um, yeah, I just have to go look and see what I have left. Okay. The hauling side, for some odd reason, there's 17,000 left in that. And I don't think I'm going to use 17,000, I've only used 18 to start with. To look at that. This is what the third year I think I've run this budget now, and this was the year that I'm going to I was going to pull it apart and see, so I have a really good track record as to where we at as to what we can do. Can you do that for me? I will. Okay. No, I I can do that. We got a good good week of rain this week, so there's no better time to sit in the time office and. So. Jack has some time you can stop in and, and lend an extra set of eyes to it, too. You're saying the attendance um, is just the attendance. That's um, not your... your um, nothing, nothing. Right, nothing over there comes out of mind. Okay. Yeah. And that's yeah. for three people currently. I think that's how I figure that. And then a fourth proposed. Yeah. The way I figure the... the way I figure it out... Um, Paul Mattel, for instance, he's up back up top on, he handles the MSW, the trash and the recycling intake side of it. He works six days a week, I budget 17. Because there's snow in the winter, he comes in, helps shovel, and they're like, it's an extra hour per week. It averages out, um, he may or may not use it all. I don't, en don't, I don't encourage him to use it all, it's just, it's there. That's what I use for a number for a budget. Just a little bit extra in there, so the extra hour that he may have to come in, and you know, if he comes in, we, if we get three storms in a week, this hours. So uh, Paul Eames handles all the mailing uh, of everything that we do, from cardboard to aluminum to plastic. He's in there an extra two or three hours, typically a week, and that's how I budget him as well. That's why we end up with a little bit extra in there. Plus, I think I did figure that third person in the entire year. So we have a fill that. So, yep. But I don't know if you, if you can send me over what the exact numbers are for proposed for next year. Because you don't propose, you didn't break out the hourly. You just gave me a, you, you just gave me a number to yeah. make this work within this number. Yeah, I can, okay. tell, you, I can tell you what they are, actually. Yeah. Um, so, I'll tell you how it, um, how the numbers come to be. So can I But I can I can also send it to you. Yeah, I think so. That'd be great. So it ended up being. 
Um, so t gave back $2,391 that was um, removed from the 2020 budget. 2021, um, they, the appropriation was $30,829. The year before, the appropriation was $33,220. So I gave that back. Um, and then um, I added an additional person, but that person, um, I only um, put at $13.50 an hour um, for the new person, um, and that was for $4,200. So that's just six hours on Saturday, right? Yes. And then, and then I did a five percent adjustment on that for an additional um, sixteen sixty-one. So that's where I came up with um, eight thousand two hundred and sixty-four dollars and a twenty-seven percent increase in that one item. Okay. Yeah, if you can send that over to me, sir. Yeah. Um, we'll look at that in the morning. So I, I think my. My concern, like, how do we find? Um, we have to agree because we can't go backwards. You know, we can't like move them forward to fifteen or sixteen dollars an hour, right? And then move them right. back to twenty twenty two. So yep. we have to find where we could move forward comfortably now and in twenty two. Right, but we're giving them. We're giving them because the five percent makes the adjustment we wanted, right? Close to it. No, we're, we're bringing it's on. off ten thousand. But the hourly rate for the attendance. Um, I, I think it gets them closer, but it probably it doesn't get them to, I'm sure, 15 okay. um, or 16. The other thing we were trying to do was get it close to what the starting pay was at highway. So, because that's where our, our some of our part time help comes from. They go back and forth. Yeah, they go back mm -hmm. and forth. So, if they're working transfer station at $13 an hour, they come over to highway and get 15 They don't want to leave. Yeah, it should. Yeah, they don't have a choice. <laughs> you know, so you know, trying to get that number close to the same that makes sense. back and forth. Yeah. Because uh, there is well actually all three of them over there on both ways. Uh wintertime we end up a lot of times having uh Paul Mattel. So he'll run he'll work that downtown as we're moving snow, he'll load the trucks. He has no desire to want to drive a truck. I probably would if he had to, but he has no problem to be able to come in, load the trucks. But we got plenty of drivers for the smaller stuff. Not so much for the bigger ones, but so um, do you think it would make a difference to them if we fix the issue and you know kind of move them forward some in this budget? Like if we can figure out how to make that number work and then give them PTO that they haven't been getting, would that be acceptable to them? For this budget, because we can't, I'm not sure. we can't take really yeah. good bites without having a major impact on the budget. Right. The thing is, all three guys are retired. Yeah. So, you know, they only typically three days a week. So. But they would get holiday pay. Yeah. And they get vacation days. Well, they do get the holiday now anyway. I don't know. Oh, sorry. They, they, they would get vacation. Yeah, they would get vacation time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know whether they get vacation or not. I don't think you do. Yeah. Um, and I'll dig out the email that I had to yeah. Caroline about that. Yeah. And I'll look at the. Uh, what's? You have a you have a, a number. Of, so many hours a week you have to work before you can get vacation. Uh, I think it's sixteen. Okay. So that's the hours they work. So they would get it. I, and this was the question I brought yeah. forward. Was is why it sixteen? Is some yeah, yeah. 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 That's just I think one of the little things that needs to be cleaned out. So. Um. So maybe maybe what he could do is see what he could land with the proposed increase as it stands. See where that gets them, mm -hmm. um, and then think about the added benefit of PTO. Um, but I, I agree, it's hard for me to think they're the lowest paid people in town, um, and they're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. They could go anywhere else and make fifteen dollars an hour and more. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes it really hard. Yeah, um, I so agree. And maybe we need to have another maybe discussion about this. I think we should. Yeah. I'll try to lay out the so I'll, I'll, see. I'll get with you someday this week. Yeah. We'll lay this out. Yeah. I don't, I don't like, know if the case will make a difference. 
I really don't. That's why I say they're 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 all retired. That the they're patient undicated. side of it yeah. is yeah. No, they're just rather, well, look at the, yeah, rather, you're retired. And look at the free time you'll have. They'd rather have the pizza. They'd rather have the money. I, I know. <laughs> I think the money. I think the money would be more. Money needs more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's the point. It's the inconsistent policy mm -hmm. that I think it should be corrected. Right. Yep. Yeah, but especially all of the yeah. Yeah, I agree. The town tells oh, them that you're not know, you know, working Monday. Oh, by the way, we're only going to pay you three, you know, three point two hours out of your five. No, that's not right. It really that, that is, is unfair. unfair. It is unfair, really. Yeah, and I've been trying to fight this one for two and a half years. Yeah. So, especially because it's already figured in the budget. I don't. When I figure the budget for them. I don't break yeah. out a holiday. I'll look see how many holidays yeah. do we have. Right. Where can I shave that number? No, it's figured at five hours per day. The money's already in there. So, so All right. Jack, would you like kind of sit down at this maybe this week and kind of look at the numbers of what we're proposing, and if that isn't even close enough to where we could get them closer, um, but but maybe not because you know, originally it was a. Originally, that was before the added percent. Oh, it was a 60 percent increase on that one. Mm -hmm. um, so now it's a 27 percent increase. Let's noodle around a little bit. Yep. Yep. That's that some of it. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Happy to work on that. George? Is there something you want to bring up? I think it's something we could start talking about. Uh, and I brought it up. I brought it to the attention of Caroline, and she was supposed to pass this out to the previous boards. The uh, temporary bridge on Old Mill. Uh, how long is this temporary bridge going to be in there for? You know, I don't know the, the whole background of that. Where was Old Mill? Been, it's my road. I, I it's, uh, uh, it's I'm going by memory. I got the envelope. Um, I thought it was supposed to be like 10 or 12 no, years or something. It's, I go to say it's 20 years. I'm about 10 oh, years mm -hmm. into it. Okay. Yeah. Is it that long? It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know the I temporary I bridge was 20 years. Okay. Because I know they put money in the CIP or planning on putting money well, we in the Well, we could CIP. be as much as 12 or 14 into that. That actually, because it was a while ago they put that down there. Right. And oh, I know was it under, under your watch that they put it in? No. I was talking to Mike Spinney, uh, he was here when that was done apparently, and a temporary bridge was supposed to be a temporary bridge, maybe 10 years or 15 years, whatever. Is that a document? This is actually, they were talking about building a bridge for half a million to seven to a million dollars. This document right here that I had, Ed brought this guy's attention to us, we haven't come down look at the bridge that's there. And with the money in the CIP that's already there, no engineering involved because this is a design build. This bridge could be replaced in three weeks at a cost of two hundred and less than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's road work and everything. Bringing the bridge back to normal width, saving three quarters of a million dollars. When did you get that number? This year. Spring. Um, this spring, we might be up a little bit from that. We might be up a, a very little bit from that because there's no hot, there's no uh, steel involved. So the price of steel and stuff, there may be concrete prices involved. Is that the proposal? This is the yeah. proposal from the guy. So I'm going to give a little history. And this was way before me. It was 12 years ago. I'm not sure why the board that was cut there went with the time of te uh, temporary bridge at the time. Money. Um, Money, yeah, but it's, it's still expensive temporary bridge. But the other thing is, um, there was something about history for the bridge, too. There's an old mill lane bridge. It's supposed to have some kind of history to it. I haven't been told anything about history. Okay. Just checking before we. Actually, put the new bridge right over that old bridge. I think that's bridge. part of the reason. I, again, I'm going by Maryland. But I think that's part of the reason they use a temporary bridge. But uh, I, I think it's something you guys need to put on the table uh, to start thinking about. No, I agree. And, and I don't uh, think... Uh, saving three quarters of a million dollars versus... Well, we're not going to spend a million dollars on the bridge road. No. But that's two Well, like, two things. One is how much longevity do we have left? 
can too is really needs to be part of SIP discussions. Yes, um, agree. Because that would be a one. Yes, agree. Right, oh, and I agree with that. But mm -hmm. what, what George is saying is when we do address it, we should address it as a one article. We can address it, you know, something that may cost two fifty as right. opposed to half. Right. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, they were looking at engineering and all that stuff, and we had this guy come in who's been doing bridge work for thirty nine plus years. What he told us, he got his whole history in that book, pretty much. I've read, so I'm not going to sorry to talk about it. You've given me this. You've, you've given me this. I've read through what I've seen. It's okay. A half dozen bridges that they've done. <laughs> Oh, it's a lot. No, but there's yeah. about half dozen in there. Right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and Ed, you said we've done this year over there, and uh, I looked at that bridge that they did, and it was a situation like you're talking about. The underneath bridge was historical, so they didn't want to do a bridge to even over it. So, you know, I mean, looking at cost savings, there's a big way of saving some big dollars where there's no you know, engineering and all that stuff with it because they can, you know, engineer it. They can build this bridge behind the existing pillars with it on. Yeah. Um, one of my concerns is this is probably rounding up on the time where we might be talking about a million dollar bond for the bridge and the fire truck. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, like, if you're talking within the next couple of years. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if we are talking. I don't think we're talking in the next couple of years for that bridge. Okay, well, that's good news. I don't think we are. That's good news. No, no, I'm, but, but like, then the price is different. Right. After but that. All George, I think, is presenting yeah. presented before is when we do. Yeah. We have to watch this all look at another alternative besides the expensive. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. It, right. it, it should go um, on the sixth radar, though. Yes. And I think they, yeah, they already put money away for this temporary. It's, it's on. It's 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 on the list of set. I saw it when we sat down. Uh, yeah, that could be. Peter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but you know, but, you know, I mean, it's fine to have you know engineering done on all this stuff. But this, you're talking about engineering fees. It costs half what the bridge is going to cost. What? But it should go on the CIP. Mm -hmm. I think we have applied for it, and oh, there was it like eighty percent. At the time, yeah. But I, I think that they've applied for it, but of course, who knows? Oh, this sounds interesting. What? SIP has this for um, gross capital cost of $7,000. Oh, it's not another temporary bridge in. Purchase year 2030. Um, what did the temporary one cost us? $275, I think. So that's how much? Probably it goes up to seventy five. That bridge cost two hundred seventy five thousand dollars. I'm guessing. No, no. how much no. was it? That temporary bridge? The temporary bridge. No, it wasn't that. How much was it though? Uh, I don't have no idea. It's back to the lot. Wow. I feel like was Jeff St. Jean um uh, I believe mm -hmm. so. was mm -hmm. it might have even been before him, but yeah. I think so it's probably been within the last. How many years you gonna have? I'm starting mm -hmm. work I'm on my fifth. So probably maybe less than ten. I'm gonna say about ten. But it's not, they're not projecting to deal with this until 2030. Yeah. Down the road, it seems pretty solid to me. I, mean. I noticed, I've been noticing some cracks that's starting in the, but it's a wooden deck, you better remember that. And uh, the hot top started cracking places, but, you know, I mean, we're just keeping an eye on things too. So. All right. Do we have an electronic copy of this? Uh, no. Okay. I mean, you might want to scan it. Do you mind if we keep that scan? Oh, no, it's it's the town's book. <laughs> but that, I, I just think it's, you know, I think something that should be put oh, in the radar. Nope, no, I agree. Thank you for doing that. Because, I mean, the, to me, especially there, to spend half a million to a million dollars on a bridge is, you know, a lot of money. And I believe that same process could be used on Oak Street if they want to use that. If the town's going to be involved with that one, because you know you're going to be paying part of that bridge also. We just did that about five years ago, too, didn't it? Well, the Oak Street Bridge is going up. It's going to come down completely. They're going to put a new bridge in there pretty soon. The state's going to be part of it. But, but they just did some of like, put a little wood on it. I'm surprised that they put water on it four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. 
Yeah, but, you know, Band-Aid's been around for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, oh, the new machine, the sidewalk machine, is supposedly on the en route to the dealership, so it'll be a few weeks. The snowblower won't be here right away, but they would like, you know, if, if we want to bring the machine to us, we they'll take part of the check. We already have a PO approved for that, so they'll have us a we need a check sign for them for that. So it's supposed to go to the deal, yeah, huh? It hasn't got to the deal yet. Uh, well, as of last week, it was in route, so it's probably there now, and it's probably a couple days in the shop. So we may have it at the end of the week, but I'm not going to hold my. Oh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's probably. No, it's not in a container ship. It's built in the United States. No, that's good. Anyway. It's got to be. But uh, I'm thinking that Ed saw it at the show. At the I saw a similar one. A similar yeah. one. So it's probably the same one. They keep saying it's not there yet, though. Thanks. You guys have a good day. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. I'll talk to you before you leave. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. When's your last day? Yeah? A week from Thursday. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. I'll be right um, So we probably want to get Celia yeah, out of here. Yeah. So, uh, so we still have left. Um, actually in charge of that. It's actually the select board because you're the hiring agent. And so I went through my email while I was sitting in the meeting. And I got an email from um, June 2nd, 2020, when the previous select board approved a job description for the um, part-time rec director year-round. Okay. Did and you forward that to us? I have not yet. I okay. can do that. Okay, um, and um, it was presented to the rec committee. Our issue was that it allotted 13000 just for the rec director. So all of the money in that line went for the rec director, and it said bi-weekly pay of $500, which we, as a rec committee, didn't think was appropriate or feasible, because we think that rec director job that line should include like office supplies and materials and we're not and as I included in the budget that final spreadsheet is based on the number of hours mm -hmm. and we may not reach the number of hours that um, or we may um, so we were kind of hesitant about the 13,000 being directly allocated to the rec director so um, the email I got from the previous chair of the select board reads, please find the approved job description for the part-time rec director. This was approved by the select board June 1st, 2020. It is also discussed and approved to not post this position until we have a better understanding of how long COVID-19 will continue. As the town offices are closed to the public as well as the school, keep our trust that things will come down and see things get back to normal. Um, we will con continue to advise the committee of the status and when it is posted. If you have any questions, please let us know. So, um, I can forward that right now to you guys. Okay. 
That was June of 2020? June 2nd, 2020. Okay. Um, so they approved that, but they didn't fund anything in 2021? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, we're going to call the So I reached out to um, Kelly Anderson because she did submit mm -hmm. a letter, um, uh, you know, kind of asking us to really consider that. So I reached out to her about her willingness to maybe help put together a plan, a more concrete plan around that position. I haven't heard back from her yet. I might have to knock on her door. Mm -hmm. um, and I can talk to her too because we've become friends working on the committee for years together. Okay. Because um, I, I feel like she probably has some great ideas, um, and she actually kind of runs her own business, um, so she might have some value in that. So she, um, she is, geez, what is her, what is it? That she, she's a, like a trainer, right? She's a massage therapist, but this she's, cool. a, she, uh, but she's uh, also does um, like personal training, and she also does. Um, <sighs> she probably does not want to swim, I'm sure. Um, she used to swim, to be a swim coach for the, the Dover swim team or the Seacoast swimmers, but she gave that up to be, spend more time with her children. Um, she also um, is very active, does like tennis lessons and stuff. Right. So she's very athletic and would love to see some of these programs in right. our community. Yeah, because I really feel like we need a liaison and an advocate for the school as well yeah. to kind of drive this program. So I do. Yeah. the job summary for this, it, it would be, the supervisor would be the town administrator. Um, and the job summary says, the essential function of the rec director is the management of the town recreation department working to bring together, to bring recreation to residents of all ages. Prior experience working with children is required. Excellent organization and communication skills required. Um, and specializing in the following areas, special events, arts and crafts, sports, games, and working with school age youth and our senior residents. Experience supervising staff. And then under summary of essential job titles, one of the things is to, um, prepare the budget so it comes out of the committee's hands and it's a paid town employee that does the budget versus a group of volunteers. Um, they would be the liaison between the select board and the rec committee or, and to both groups. Um, they would um, evaluate effectiveness of recreation facilities, areas and services, um, work in accordance um, Approving things with the select board approving policies and policies. Um, provide long range um, plans to meet the recreational needs of all age groups in the town. Um, the, it would be supervised by the town administrator. Um, now I'm not going down. Um, responsible for seasonal and weekly planning of the summer camp. Um, Filing accident reports because that became an issue in 2018. Is that we had a lot of liabilities that were not brought to the town's attention, and if because we're on the town's insurance, if it were a liability that was catastrophic, it needs to be reported to the town insurance within 48 hours, and not all the reports were coming to the town administrator reported. Um, so that's in there to inform them. Overseeing marketing of all of our programs. Um, the director will work with the volunteer work committee, civics groups, schools, and organizations to generate offerings and participation. So we'll reach out to neighboring recreation programs for support and collaboration. That is the last bullet point under there is to work with the school and everything else. So I think our concern in your proposed budget was that it was a um, 5% increase to the bottom line. Um, and so would you be willing to give up the ice skating rink for that position? I would say yes for this year because we've had the, um, we've had the rest
on our agenda for much longer. And the rec director could take over writing the writing grants and doing for this and could potentially help get outside funding for we wouldn't have so much for like the skating rink. So your proposed uh, um, appropriation <clears throat> for a summer day camp um, is up $22,000. You expect that to be fully revenue generated? Yes. That's a 59% um, increase there. But your your plan is going to be fully um, self-funded. Yeah. Well, this so it'll be offset, right? Cost. Yeah. yeah. So if we, you didn't have that amount of people, it goes down. Right? It's based on the number of campers and... When we last did camp in 2018, we were looking at a seven-week camp. We were proposing a seven-week camp in 2019 and 2020. Um, I don't think we even planned for... Well, we planned for a seven-week camp in 2020 and 2021. But looking at the school calendar, we're looking at a, an eight-week camp. An additional week for all of those campers, and we um, a lot of money too um, before and after care, which is an additional fee um, for families. So that pays um, above and beyond what the cost of this. that covers some of our overages for staff and stuff like that. So have you? Um thought about <clears throat> how you might work like with neighboring communities for this program? And, and also have you considered the fact that enrollments are down recently? Um, and, and also, to get, uh, I'm going to tag on to that. How much of this uh, um, revenue is generated by outside residents? Um, so, I do have that information. I think it's small. So I a few kids to come in here on the side. Um, I did a spreadsheet a couple of years ago based on the numbers, and I would have to look it back up again. Um, but I can think off the top of my head, the large families, like, um, there were, the majority of our campers were single campers, like one child per family. <clears throat> then we gave based on the number of children you had, um, like a 10% discount for the second child and then a little bit more. Um, so the families that were three or more, there were two Rollins for families that were three or more at the time and one family from out of town that was three or more. Um, and the Rollins for families, if they register for when we were doing a seven week program, if they registered for all six weeks at once, even if they weren't going to come, yeah. they would get a week free. But that was only Rollinsford residents. And Rollinsford residents paid $100 a week. So getting 600 instead of 700. And usually the week of July, everybody's on vacation. So it's pretty light that week. And staff is also gone that week. And the camp, camp, camp counselors are not paid unless they're at work. And if they go home early because of light loads or don't come to work, that's a savings for us. Out-of-town residents are slated to pay $25 more a week, and they don't get the discount for paying for the whole summer. So out-of-town residents for a seven-week program bring in $8.50 for the whole summer um, for an individual child. Um, and... Um, so I don't have the breakdown on this computer, I don't think, um, but I can get you the breakdown of how many campers were in town, how many campers were out of town, how many were in town, how many were Camp Raleigh, and we actually made money 
the, the teen camp made more money than Camp Raleigh did. And they were coming three days a week for $100. Um, and they were going on trips every day. So the teen camp helped offset that. But the, a previous select board asked us to um, change the way we did things and get rid of the teen camp in place of our rec director for year round. Um, and yes, I have talked to other communities. Um, not every community on the seacoast has its own. Um, I've talked to Northwood. They don't have a summer camp. They, uh, they send their kids. If you want to go to summer camp, it's not in the town of... Um, you go to another town. You go to another town or another agency. Um, last year, Summersworth was only Summersworth residents, but they do allow other residents normally if there is space and you pay an upcharge. We've talked to them. We've talked to Barrington and we got a lot of our materials from Barrington. Um, we sat down with we had a conversation with the Elliott Rec Director so we know um, some information from them and what they do. Um, we, do they have They do. And what Elliott actually does is they have two summer camps one for school age children that is like um, Camp Raleigh, just one site stuff. And then there is one that is um, like hiking and outdoor adventure one. And they have two camp directors that run it during the summer. And during the rest of the year, the one that does the hiking, they have one camp director that does. Is year round. Is year round, but. He does senior programs and stuff, and he they get a grant from your car to keep community members active, and they pay half of his salary. Um, Is there an opportunity for us to do that? I don't think that your hospital would do that with us, but um, what with Douglas or Mass General might be somebody to look into with that. But UNH also could give us a rec director or a recreation management student and they would pay 50% of the wages through um, work study money. So UNH and Wentworth Douglas are both opportunities could be pursued for that. Um, and Rochester has a summer camp as well as the Y the um, Y out of Portsmouth both have summer camps that take anybody. But are, is, are the towns our size typically have summer camp with our student population? Or can we do any research around that? Um, I am not the one to ask about that. <laughs> David Josco did do some research okay. on like towns our size and he's a recommend committee member and what they have to offer. Well, so I'm um, the rec the ex officio, so maybe I need to have a discussion with them. Yeah. So, so you're switching. So is yes. Dover, it's right. is Dover, I'm just asking, so is, if, is there a program in Dover where it belongs with kids to go if they want to pay a fee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can go to work. Well, it's probably expensive, in March or two. Yeah. I'm just yeah. wondering. Okay. Yeah. Um, Camp Cool, um, which is run out of the ice rink, our kids could attend. That costs us more money than it, well, yeah, there's an over resident price and an out of town price for that. Um, and then Marsh would sell Burke, is that? Uh, Clubhouse Kids, you can go there. They do, actually, Clubhouse Kids does things a little different. Um, and the town of South Burke does have a summer camp too. Um, Clubhouse Kids does a daily rate, so you can send your kid every day, or you can send them by the week. It's up to you. You can pick and choose which dates you want to go. Um, and then it's three hundred and twenty-five dollars a week for their summer camp. It may be three hundred and twenty-five dollars for the whole summer for the town-run camp. So, so I think what we need to know from Celia is whether or not we're going to fund this rec director position. So, what I'd like to say, what I'd like to propose is, um, since Celia was willing to. Um, um, 
forfeit the ice rink, mm -hmm. that we put in funding um, in the amount of, so the request was for $7,000, $6,200 more for ice rink. So what I'd like to propose is that we fund the rec director line How much of that? Um, for three thousand. Okay. But contingent upon solid being put together um, for the position. So not just a drop a job description, but a path forward um, for the program. And that's something that, that uh, will them like select board and rec and yep. Yeah. I mean that's what so that so when we look at that budget, the only fund um, assuming that um, the summer camp is fully self-funded yep. um, is really eleven thousand eight hundred dollars. So it's just the facility, it's the director and it's the director, um, and it's also um, senior programs for five hundred, salmon falls family day for five hundred. And then there was eight hundred dollars um, right. for right. winter rec basketball. So really, the ask is for like I'm saying it's going to be like eleven thousand eight hundred dollars, assuming they're fully funded um, for their big camp. Uh, and basketball does not fully fund, but they do bring in money. Okay. Um, they they try to fully fund. It depends on the number of kids, and it depends on. Um, um, a, the teams, how many teams we can get together. But it's been 30 or $35 that each player pays, and that covers like um, insurance and reps for home games. Um, and there's been talk that we should sell concessions or something, but with COVID we can't do that. But um, that has Is there interest in that this year? That is something we need to I mean, bring that, to this group, actually, when... Our last rec committee meeting was only three people, um, and it was the person that's going to take over basketball. The school is mandating that we wear masks anytime we're in the building, and we need to talk to the school, find out what their policy is on masks and COVID-19, and talk to you because you're our authorizing board. So we need to be in compliance with your COVID-19 policies, too. Okay. So I, I will make the motion um, to move forward with that funding um, with the contingency that a well-defined plan is put together and a complete job is um, And then I think that the ex officio for the rec committee has to work with the rec committee to put that together. Um, but if we can't come up with that plan, and also, I do want to validate revenue, um, like SMA revenue, school revenue, to make sure I don't get in trouble there. Um, uh, I'd be willing to consider that. Okay, I'll second that. Um, okay. So there's no promise. Um, the, the promise is that there's work to do, and we have to make sure that work gets done in order to actually fill that position. So, but if the work gets done, then we'll. I want to make sure. I want to make sure we're going to have attendance. Exactly. Oh, and right. and That's concerned. something we'll find out. <laughs> That's my concern. So there's some some research work that really has to go into that as well. I think we need what attendance has been historically. Um, and I know COVID has a big impact. On we had previous to COVID 100 to 125 kids from 2016 to 2018. But that's summer day camp, right? Summer day camp. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to participate in the rec program. It's a problem. You know? Yep. So. And I actually sent you Kelly Anderson in August of 2020 put together um, a, or last summer, summer of 2020 put together a, what we call a road map for the rec committee, mm -hmm. and it breaks down by month what the, committee the committee does okay. and what needs to be done on a month-to-month -month basis. And so I just forwarded that to the whole select board. Do you think it's accurate now? Um, Kelly and I went over it, oh, and we went over it with a, as a committee, and... Um, I think so. Um, it goes into depth as far as even in like 
October, start communication for basketball with the RGS principal. And I propose that we have a separate meeting, um, only because we have probably another 30 minutes to get through this agenda. Well, you know what, I so, would propose maybe... Well, we have to make a decision on the motion first. Okay. Or do we want to table it? When do we need it for? When's our meeting with the Tomorrow. budget committee? Tomorrow. No, no, not this. To... No, no, that's not for this. Um, work department. It's it Wednesday is, night. Oh, it? I received an email from John on the way tonight. We can try with present. Um, and then there's cemetery and the library as well tomorrow. So, um, tomorrow night or Wednesday? Wednesday. What's today? Monday. Today's Monday. Monday. It's Wednesday. Start Wednesday. Yeah. Um, so I feel like we either make a make this motion um, or we table it. We can also get input from the budget committee um, on their proposal. Why don't we? Why don't we do that? Table it and get input. Okay, follow my motion. Okay. Um, um, get input from the budget. And that's probably ideal because really they are. You'll be there, we'll be there. How much more budget stuff do we have to, I shouldn't say do we have to, how much more budget stuff do we want to cover tonight? Do you think we have another half hour? You want to try to shop um, it? And well, we still got to go through the Avatar assessment, <coughs> free assessment contract. Um, we have to talk about um, fund balances um, for the reserve funds and what we want to do there. And um, we have, um, yeah, so those things to get. Okay. I want to say, can you guys make it tomorrow? And just, okay, then we'll get the budget to it then. Okay. Um, so we'll table it until we talk to the budget committee. Okay. So I do have information on the, that was forwarded to me from David Jostle on the ice cream. Can you forward that to us? Yes. Okay. But, but I am going to do that, but I wanted to make sure. So send us um, any information you have that we can contemplate. Um, um, and let's see what the budget committee, what their feeling is on this as well. Okay. Um, I know that last year there was discussion about the what happened to the rec director position. They were looking forward to my budget. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. So we'll see you on Wednesday night. Yes. <laughs> Come square. Um, so these things might be much quicker. Um, we, we have to have a, uh, assessment contract. Yep. Um, you guys still got to look that over, right? I don't think it makes sense to me because I'm pretty sure I got an email that said that the last time we did a reassessment was like $88,000. Um, but this proposed contract is only four five thousand um, dollars. I did um, call and leave a message, but I haven't heard back yet. Huh? They usually pretty good about that. So I'm not. We're going to hold off and sign on that until we find out what's going on. I think we should. Yeah, no um, well, and we really need to know for budgeting purposes as well because. How much was it? The, big difference. So the reevaluation fund. So the culvert repair fund has forty thousand. Hmm, this is a typo here. <laughs> it actually reads as four hundred and eight thousand one hundred and eighty nine dollars ninety one cents, but it's probably forty thousand something. The ten thousand is due from the town, um, and then. Uh, the revaluation fund currently has thirty-seven six nine six point eight seven plus eighteen seven fifty due from the town for a total of fifty-six thousand four hundred and forty-six dollars and eighty-seven cents. So that contract, if it's accurate, is, is covered uh, under this reserve fund. But I'm worried because I'm, I'm pretty sure I have an email. I thought I had an email that said. So I need to double check that. Where's the avatar? Where's the avatar contract right now? It's forty-five, right? It's forty-five. Yep. Okay. Um. So we need to double check that number. Yep. Um. So I'll call again, but I'll also try to dig up. I, I think I asked Chuck for the number, and I thought that's completely. Eighty. I think so. 
Um, so the other part of this contract um, we have to consider is um, on paragraph. Um, so that's that was paragraph two point six. Um, the other part of this contract is um, we have to provide them with space and equipment. Um, so I'm a little concerned about, or we need um, considering how we're going to make that work um, because everybody's very spread out right now. Um, so that we'll have to give that some consideration. Space, office, issue, and accommodations, paragraph eight point two, what you're referring to. Yep. The municipalities so, shall provide suitable office spaces with desks, tables, telephones, access, and chairs for use of the agents and employees of the company in performing their necessary work. How many people are they going to have? I don't know. They have a table, yeah. and a tape printer, table <coughs> printer, and a computer, and a chair. How, how many people? Two? Two. Just one. Oh. And it, it was right in, okay. in the... The select board office. So well, the yeah. old select board well, So office. all the offices are, are going, yeah. going to be um, full yeah. now. So we need to think about that. We do. But they have a desk now. No, I don't know. No, because no, they, they moved out. everything they on. Have <laughs> when they come in, it's the filming space. So that is the other But then they work out of here during the day. Right. So they, they, just, they have more people. They spread out. So they take all their stuff out when they're done everything? Yeah. Okay. No, I see what you're saying. I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's that. So I would rather um, hold on to signing this until we know for sure what the costs are. I'm fine with um, that. Okay. Um, I mean, if this is truly the cost, that's great because then um, we might be able to get away with not funding the revaluation fund this year. Um, But then, well, I mean, yeah. So there's that, and then. So I just what what you probably already said, but what makes you think that that contract from Avatar is not correct? I don't think it's not correct. I just think that I read that the last time we did this was eighty eight. Was eighty eight, okay. and I just want to make sure that either I misinterpreted something, um, or that this number is really accurate. Okay, okay. got it. Um, and then, so I talked about the reevaluation, the conservation, and then, um, so a couple things. Um, the Wentworth Douglas um, payment, statement payments. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we're not going to have an issue with that because it's not part of the operating budget. So um, just a quick update on that, Mike. Um, there was an issue where we had Wentworth Douglas um, pay for property taxes when they had filed for an abatement. So they paid $45,000 that they shouldn't have paid, and now we have to repay them. We have a legally binding agreement to repay them. So we're trying to figure out where that's coming from, and I think we got um, um, enough information from the auditor to know that it's not going to have an impact on our operating budget. Okay. Um, but um, we have to think about that for that. I, and I don't know enough about the abatement part of it to know what the impact is for future years. Like this year we're okay, but I don't know if the next two years um, there's going to be an impact. So that might be something that yeah. we add to your list to look okay. into. Yeah, a good point. Okay. By the way, there's a file in the drive for it. Okay. That has everything, all the papers. And that for you. <laughs> okay. um, and so the, oh, see okay. so the last thing was um, the budget. Um, so I made the adjustments that we talked about. Yep. So, um, and so where we're at is 1.36. Right. Yeah. So it's 1.63 percent over last year um, for a difference of $1,045. Um, so that doesn't. So the, the open items around this are um, insurance increases. Did you put REC in there back in? I did not. 
but that's going to change it. Um, right, so rec is not in there. Um, any, actually, I take it back. I did, I did, I did, and you'll see it's highlighted. Um, I put 7,000 in as a low number. Um, what else are you saying right before that? But um, this, the, the other thing would be percentage difference. No, actually, this is wrong. Um, this is going to be wrong because I applied 5% um, on the summer game plan, which really shouldn't have been because that's, let me give you that number again. So, so um, if I were to put $10,000 on the right leg line item, Um, oh, that I hate it's that. In the bag. So actually, that would bring us to um, forty-three thousand. So uh, putting back the uh, the full summer day camp, um, the increase ends up being fifty-seven thousand three hundred and sixty-six dollars, <throat> and that includes a ten thousand dollar line uh, funding for the rec director. And that's 2.34 percent. So are you guys ready for Wednesday night? What? Budget, are you guys ready for budget Wednesday night? Uh, uh, well, cemetery and library are easy. That's, yeah, um, that's all you have. That's all you have is cemetery, library, and rack. Okay. Uh, let me double check that, but I'm pretty sure it was just that's, that's what it is. So if we did need to um, add the 10000 for rack, yep. um, it's an increase of $47,366, um, 1.93% increase. One one. One point nine three. Oh, so, it's, okay. so now that doesn't also include any adjustments that we might make to transfer station um, are the rates. So those are the open items. Is rec um, transfer station and insurance. So Oh, and one other thing. We don't have a balance. I mean we don't have a bottom line yet. It's gonna probably be close to two percent. Is one there's one other thing um, that I found. Um, so one of the other things that came up was the, there's a change in the planning and zoning um, admin support line. So I, I went. Is that the sixteen dollar one? Yeah. So I went back and looked at the <coughs> the budget from last year, and we had been funding that position in 2020. Um, between the planning secretarial and the zoning secretarial for about $1,500. Mm -hmm. And then this last year, um, it went up to almost $7,000. So I wondered how that happened. Like, what changed about that position? That, other than it got combined into one line item, was two line items. Planning secretarial was Eleven thousand, um, eleven hundred eighty-three dollars, and zoning was four hundred eight, so around fifteen hundred dollars. But then in twenty twenty-one, it went to seven thousand. Oh, it's almost seven thousand. Increase in hours and the increase in salary. So I don't know. We'll have to dig up the minutes um, of the um, from the meetings to figure out um, what the change. Do you know anything about that summer? No, I don't. Okay. All right. Um, 
So I think we need to investigate that as well. And I, I'm kind of curious. I, I, I had these last meeting too. It's like two different quotes for salt. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with these. There's no, there's no PO in here. Um, so I'll ask. I'll ask Chuck. Okay. okay. So like um, do do we want to? Um, so you're going to get with Ed to see how the numbers work out, mm -hmm. um, and then we have the recreation budget on Wednesday. So land use is the um, land use admin support is the other thing that we have to determine. I got a PO here too. But when's our uh, when's our next? Do we have one on the meeting on Monday coming up? Is there any is there a reason we should? Um, well, only to finalize the budget. Maybe we might want to just do a quick one hour meeting. Yeah, finalize the budget. Just make a strictly budget, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Any because you know we're having people. Mm -hmm. um, does that sound good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, and I'm gone. Uh, what? Yeah. You got next week? Yeah, the weekend. Okay. Um, let me just let me just pass this PO while we're doing business. So, um, all right. So we don't want to make any adjustments to the budget yet. We want to wait until you meet with Ed. We meet with the budget committee, mm -hmm. and then. Um, and we somehow get up information on the change to land use admin. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And, and then the one other thing is we need to um, see if we can get any early information about the insurance increases for this coming year. Um, personnel, uh, life, unemployment, work stuff. So we don't have numbers on that. And I know I'm going to reiterate this, but we're going to keep on pushing DRA to try to get that right. Uh, tax rate set. Um, I got a PO here though, I'm just going to read off quick. Okay. Yeah. PO number 2003, it's for, uh, it's to payable to Mailways Incorporated and it's for uh, postage for the tax bills coming up. So it's, it's 1200, quantity 1200 at 0.426, so it's over $510. Hang on one second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You guys know what that's for? It's to set up the tax bills. Um, Alright. Yeah, I think I think Monday cleared everything up. I mean, we're pretty close. Tim, you feel pretty good about everything you've done over tonight? Do we need um, a new business? No. We, uh, yeah, we're not done yet. Sorry. So we just need to schedule this meeting. So we're going to make sure to schedule Monday um, for just a budget workshop. Cool. Okay. Period. Um, Nothing else. Any other business to come before the board is next? Um, I have a Gmail. Oh, yes. What? What? Oh, yes. The newsletter. Oh, I have got to have something final by the end of the week. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask you something about that. The, uh, the conversation we had about the water and sewer and sending the pamphlet and stuff like that. Can we put something in the newsletter about that? I'm sure we did at some point. I mean, should we put it in this newsletter? What pamphlets? I mean, we were talking about raising the wind. You said the cost. Remember about, uh, I don't know when it was, I'm going to say not too long ago, the last mailings for, I don't know if it was septic or leave. Oh. Yeah. So everybody gets that in the mail, though. That's you what know, I think he's talking about water and sewer. Water and sewer. Are you talking the, about? The, 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 we we're looking for ways for them to get their information out, so should we put a little plug for oh, that yeah. in the we newsletter? Did. We have. I have something from Allison. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I reach wanna, out to everybody and ask for Do you wanna approval what you put so far? Yeah. I'm okay with you I'm okay with you. Do you, you put have tomorrow. anything else? I you know what tomorrow I will tomorrow I will go through everything you wrote and I'll, I'm sure I'll have some things to put to you. I'll I'll, okay. I'll email you. Because I'm sure there's some things that we talked about. Well, I think yeah. they're I think they probably should be. Okay. And then I think Kim and Jack could do the same. Mm-hmm. Like by tomorrow? Well, no, no, I'm not saying tomorrow, but get it. See what you can add to it. Well, you want to add to the newsletter. Not by tomorrow. By tomorrow, the end of the week. I want to leave that up Okay, I can do that. No problem. I can get all of you to get some stuff for um, I don't have time tomorrow. So we missed a couple things in here, sorry. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Um, the heating proposals for Pete Gagnon, um, we have them. It's in our email if you guys can take a look at them. All right. And then the only other thing is 
was um, uh, the town hall plantings and hall seasonal decorations item. Okay. So we got a request, uh, email request from Kate Nesman, yep. for volunteering to do some enhancements um, around um, improvements around the building, um, holiday stuff. Um, but she basically wants to improve these things. Yeah, I'm not bad. So you're talking about Thanksgiving, putting up some turkeys or something like that, pumpkins and stuff like that. Decorative stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. I don't have any objection. I know, Sally, you did some work recently. Did right? you put the flowers? Oh, I did the flowers. No, thank you. I've taken yeah. over them. No, it looks nice. So do, do, we don't even need a motion. We can just celebrate on that. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't have an objection unless somebody feels some ownership around it since she's been taking care of it. Do you have any thoughts about that? About the flowers? About doing like... Pumpkins and all that stuff. Yeah, Kate said she'd like to do it. Oh, if she wants to do pumpkins or something. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Well, I, I think we have, we have candles that go in the windows. And I, I, I think it's really like candles. owning it like year round. Like year round. Okay. I don't have a problem with it either. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah, we'll what was the other business? There was something else. I'm sorry. Um, just take a look at the um, yeah. key gagging proposals. Yep. And then that's all. All right. Uh, yeah, we, we have one thing here from uh, Throwback Brewery. I don't know whether you saw it. Do we know what Carolyn has? Yeah. Have we not approved that yet? No. Is this something we got to sign or we just want to get the motion to approve that? Yes, we need to approve it. Second. 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 I think that needs to go through John Raskovich. Yeah, but we got something. We have to sign something for that. They they want to have deals. They want to. No, he's fine with it. He's fine with it. Just deal with serve alcohol. He said he's fine with it. He just he wanted to make sure we just had to approve it. Correct. We're going to have to end this meeting if we're running out of that. Um. It's not usually this chaotic or late, right? Sorry. But we had a really big event today, so it's usually a little bit better. I'm just going to close it off by: Is there any other community input from that? Yes. Other community input. I'll make it really quick. Carrie Boyle. Um, I was just thinking, um, talking about the newsletter, that maybe it's a good time because um, the revenue with motor vehicles, things like that, to remind people that have just moved into town that they need to, they have 30 days to register their vehicles oh, that's good. That's good. in the town of Rollinsford. Mm -hmm. And um, also, maybe reminding people again, and I know it's been in newsletters in the past, about um, building permits for things, because those, I think revenue people, jobs. yeah, they're revenue, revenue streams, and I think that people have kind of, out there have kind of <sighs> slowed down doing that during COVID. I don't know, maybe reminders in the newsletter. Okay. Just a thought. Um, I don't know if people have that's said that my COVID. I think there were more yeah. outbreaks during COVID. Yeah, they are. Jack, in your, in your free time, would you like to um, no. <laughs> um, follow up with our insurance rate? Um, Who do I talk to? I have no idea. It, it would be Primex. So if you call the Primex to see if they have any early. Let me follow up oh, with Chuck. Oh, you have a volunteer. So. Perfect. Thank you, Mike. Can I, can I just say one more quick thing while you're wrapping up and haven't closed the meeting? Yeah, we haven't adjourned yet, but um, we're almost... Just about um, the recreation, um, I, I really I really would like to see, um, like Celia said, there were only three people attended the rec committee meeting. Um, I really think that more parents, um, it's hard to ask the taxpayers to fund something when you can't even get volunteer support from parents in town. Um, so I, I'd like to see a little bit more of that. I'd also like to see how many kids really participate. Um, and also, our kids now go to, they go from grade school to Marshwood. And so maybe there's something to do with um, piggybacking on South Berwick's program. I just think we're a small town, and when we're talking about salaries for a rec director, um, but yet we're, you know, we're really, we're really focusing what we're giving the fire department and the transfer station, things like that. But we're going to fund 
the recreation department. I just, I, I just think we need to. You need more information, and I, and I just think there needs to be more parent involvement. I know I'm kind of all over the place there, but I wonder if maybe that would be something for the newsletter. I I was thinking of doing a help wanted and with the firefighter they want and then the plow driver, but then unpaid um, opportunities. I thought I'd talk about having people volunteer and getting to somehow talk about um, the real interaction, you know, the physical, that you're really meeting in person and working together in person, rather than just having a social media yeah. and I, I think relationship with the world. My biggest, my biggest concern in the select board before me's biggest concern with REC was the, the lack of parent participation. Mm -hmm. And it's something at one point we had about eight and it seemed like we were moving ahead and then they started dropping back down and now they're like barely struggling. Well, you, you Which is concerning. Also you have dependence in the schools going down substantially too. Yeah. Well, so, so I mean there's a lot of things that we have to think about. I mean I'm, we're not saying we're going to you know budget 10,000. We're just saying that we may budget 10,000 if there's, everything lines up. Right. But there are other opportunities for towns and stuff too, I agree. Maybe we might explore that. Well, maybe could we get something in the newsletter if, you know, to try to solicit interest, um, even by email, if ask parents if they're interested in recreation programs in town to email the board or email, you know. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That too. There was a, I think part of it is it's so amorphous. Come volunteer. Well, volunteer. What do you want to do? And you have to be more specific. Now, when they had soccer the other year, they had tons of people, kids participating, the parents. And yeah, soccer was a big one, and you know, this basketball may be a big one. But yeah, but yeah. it has a lot to do with school too. I don't. I don't think the basketball is going to fly this year. With this year. That's just my guess. Especially well, if they have to wear a mask. This year as well, is that, you know, COVID isn't done. Right. right. That, that was my point. Carrie, did you have something? Well, this is still on the same conversation, but going with what Salme said, um, I, I just think that this town has gotten away from volunteers. I think it would be good to get that back. Um, and get more people interested in doing things. And it doesn't even have to be just with fire and rec, but, but other things. Um, because it just seems like everyone now, it's like if you need something done, it's like, well, we have to, you know, we have to, it's what are we paying this person, whatever. There are people that will volunteer their time and give back to the community. I do believe they're out there. Mm -hmm. um, you guys, um, you know, so, so I just, I think there needs to be kind of revive, you know, giving back and involving in the town, so. Well, maybe just, that, that's kind of how we need to frame the quarterly, you know, are you interested in volunteering for the rec program? Are you interested in the rec program? Are you your children? So maybe sure. frame it to be more open. You know, conservation, I think, has mm -hmm. empty slots. So, like, two, we'll say out of two out of three people in rec right now, there's only one person has kids. The other two is volunteering, just volunteer, because they don't have kids. So, it would be good for to have kids volunteer, you know. All right. Yeah. So, we're meeting at 6.30. Yep. On budget. Yep, and it'll be like just budget. Yep. No department. And we only have a few things to really um, close up. So if we can okay. why don't you list like you, why you list those? Us? Email us and let us know if you get any information from insurance rates. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other business before I close out? Jack, would you say No. I was just gonna say send us a list of those. Oh, of all the, the takeaways. The, the ones that, no, the open items. Oh yes, yeah, so, so we'll all find Oh and just one thing or two, I'd love to get a, that thirty or forty page.
Our uh, opponent says right. we need to roll with that. All right, so I want to make a motion to close the meeting. Second. Second. I second it. All right, okay.